following the Arab Spring, the challenge is to actually translate all these protests, all uh, these uprisings from Morocco to Iraq, into meaningful change, because it's quite clear what the people want, their aspirations for greater uh, democratic rule, transparency, uh, getting rid of corruption. These are basic things that I think most people across the world want, and uh, particularly in a region that hasn't seen this for so many decades. How you actually bring that about in countries where, for the most part, there's been no coherent opposition, most of these countries haven't had political parties, their civil society is not particularly developed, whilst there are very bright, intelligent and energetic people, there aren't really the structures in which they can harness that talent. So I think what we're seeing, particularly, for example, in Egypt and Tunisia, is the challenge of how you actually move from deposing a dictator, but then to getting to a democracy. And of course, in some ways, that is much, much harder. So it's going to be a bumpy ride. And one analyst uh, I was talking to uh, last week was saying it could be five years in Egypt, but he saw that as an optimistic uh, position. It may be a little bit shorter in Tunisia, where maybe they don't have faced so many challenges. But in Libya and Syria, where the regime had almost total control of every part of the political process, should we get to a situation that Gaddafi and Bashar al-Assad are no longer in power, then it will be even tougher than in those two countries. I think the other challenge is if Libya and Syria, uh, we see the regimes actually last, then does this mean that the rest of the countries that are an uprising uh, suddenly begin to fade away and there won't be meaningful change?